seven years ago this month, I had two and a half months on the job. I presented my first State of the City address to this group. We had not yet been hit by the impact of the Great Recession, and things leading up to this point have been very positive and ready. The city's population has grown by that month by 25% with the annexation of the Cascade Benson neighborhood. The Federal Reserve Bank opened its regional uh, facility in Renton, and we were about to cut ribbon on the new waterfront home of the Seattle Seahawks. But it really didn't take long before the full impact of the recession arrived, thrusting all of us into a mode that lasted a number of years. I want to reflect back to March of 2008, because the positive news I had, uh, I was able to share that day, was a sign of a new rent. A commitment by community leaders to change the reputation of this city years, years back was finally paying off. We had built a strong foundation that continues to serve us today. I'll start by telling you that the state of the city today is strong. And I believe we owe a good deal of thanks to community leaders who came together with city officials 20 years ago with a desire to change the direction of the city. And a couple of those leaders are in the room here today. I want to share a bit of this history with those who are new to rent. How many people are relatively new last two years to rent? Oh, not too many. I better go home. <laughs> You're going to hear it anyway. Back in the early 90s, Renton was not a place where people wanted to move to or open a business. Frankly, we had the unfortunate distinction of being one of the worst cities in the region to develop anything. Understanding that change was necessary, Mayor, Mayor Earl Clymer and his staff met with a frustrated and very vocal group of local leaders and listened to a barrage of reasons why Renton was an undesirable place to build. He received a verbal beating, but hung in there. And instead of trying to defend city processes that were clearly unfriendly to the development community, Mayor Clymer pulled everybody together, and the rest is history. A transformation began at City Hall over a period of years that moved around to become a model city in this state for our customer service and permitting process. This, along with implementing a very effective economic development strategy, resulted with an explosion of new development. This commitment to improving our community continues today. During my annual staff retreat with department heads in January, we spent time reviewing some of the accomplishments over the past seven years, despite the worst recession most of us have ever experienced. It was a pretty impressive list, and I want to share a few of the items with you today. The first, as I've done in years past, I would like to provide you with some insight as to what we do as a city. Few people are really aware of the depth of services provided by our city. Our employees have a huge responsibility of providing the number of vital services every day that citizens have come to expect. This is everything from public safety to services that impact the overall quality of life in our community. The city is actually comprised of approximately 90 separate businesses each with very different roles and objectives. With a workforce of 686 people, we provide services to nearly 100,000 people spread throughout a 24 square mile community. Our public work staff maintains about 675 miles of roads. Throughout the year, our water utility division pumps, purifies, and delivers nearly two and a half billion gallons of water to our citizens and our businesses. And we receive 200, we service, excuse me, 223 miles of sewer lines to make sure that all the water that we've delivered to you, along with some of the added waste that you've included, goes away upon demand. We have a highly trained fire department responsible to put out fires, conduct rescues and extrications, and handle more than 10,500 calls for medical assistance every year. They also provide fire prevention and emergency preparedness services. And it's our dedicated police officers who are called upon to mediate family fights and arrest those that are preying on society. They risk their personal safety every day to serve our citizens. And as the population of the region grows, so do the calls for police intervention. We also have a hardworking group of employees who maintain over 1,200 acres of parkland, 
open space and trails. We provide recreation programs that are utilized by thousands of people throughout the year. We also offer specialized services for senior citizens and local youth, as well as programs to assist our vulnerable populations. One business we offer is golf. We operate one of the most successful municipal golf courses in the region, where 55,000 rounds were played last year. In addition, our employees oversee many public events throughout the year, from Renton River Days and the Farmer's Market to the Fourth of July celebration and our neighborhood picnics. Our popular aquatics center serves more than 70,000 people each summer. We license over 4,000 businesses annually, and we review hundreds of plans submitted by contractors and developers. This is for new residential and commercial construction, as well as remodeling and expansion projects. We have trained mechanics responsible for repairing and maintaining a fleet of 530 vehicles. And these are from police cars to fire engines and dump trucks, plus another 300 pieces of equipment from motors to vacuums. Our code enforcement officers respond and resolve more than 800 calls for service each year. On top of all this, we operate an airport where more than 100,000 annual flights take place. And besides general aviation, this includes the maiden flight for every new 737 airplane built in our city. And as Jesse mentioned a few minutes ago, that's now exceeding 500 airplanes a year. That's just a small amount of the lines of businesses that we manage. Our workforce is comprised of accountants, secretaries, truck drivers, firefighters, police officers, attorneys, landscape workers, road maintenance crews, planners, inspectors, and even a certified arbor. We have civil and electrical engineers, uh, facility experts, mechanics, communication experts, IT professionals, custodial crews, record clerks, parks maintenance crews, emergency management experts, human service providers, and much more. So as you can see, we're a very busy and a complicated organization. Over the past seven years, we have focused attention on improving our efficiency and customer service while also meeting the new challenges of a growing, aging, and very diverse population. This past year, we continue to focus internally on improving our management and leadership skills. We introduced more training and set a new direction for our workforce to nurture the improved culture of customer service. We have achieved many of our goals, and I feel this, along with ongoing feedback that we receive from the public, is a testament to the level of success that we're enjoying today. I mentioned last year that the, with the support of the City Council, we set a goal to be the best city in King County. To help us achieve this goal, we established four areas of priority for special attention. They include continuing our focus on economic development, improving service for our vulnerable and diverse populations, enhancing customer service and productivity, and developing a sustainable fiscal strategy. We've made progress in each one of these areas. Addressing our diverse and vulnerable populations is one of our top priorities. Instead of just citing statistics, we provided some solutions to address the needs of our vulnerable populations, such as the Center of Hope that's located at City Hall, and our feeding programs, and the cold water, uh, weather shelter, and, then, and other initiatives addressing our vulnerable seniors and also the homeless. To improve service for all of our residents, we knew it was important that our employees have a better knowledge about race, different cultures, and unintentional biases. We have provided training for all of our employees on race, equity, and inclusion. We have strengthened our relationship with our community liaisons. We are also developing an equity lens. I'm sure you've heard that uh, quite a bit lately. That will help us evaluate several internal systems, such as job recruitment and purchasing, with incorporation of inclusion as one of our guidelines. We are learning more about the needs of our aging population so that we can be in a better position to offer programs and services to meet their needs. We are working closely with local churches to address the need of our homeless and vulnerable populations. 
And we are focusing a lot of effort on improving communication and relationships between our police officers and members of our diverse communities. Pastors George Houston and Jess Champers the Living Hope Christian Fellowship came to my, my office in late December to discuss some of these issues and to help develop a plan on how we can build these relationships. This was followed by a special Martin Luther King event at their church, which was, uh, which was attended by members from my staff as well as Police Chief Kevin Milosevic. In late January, Pastor Houston wrote to the Renton Reporter and offered some of his thoughts on a series of articles that they had published, which was titled, Could Ferguson Happen Here? I found it interesting on some of uh, Pastor Houston's comments. He said, Frank, an honest discussion in a public arena is necessary if we are to avoid misunderstandings that lead to mistrust and worse. He also wrote, we are fortunate to have a police force that adheres to high standards of conduct. Situations like Ferguson don't just happen overnight. They are the result of years of rage simmering beneath the surface. surface. Pastor Houston also noted that these conversations and the special event that they had on Martin Luther King Day were only the beginning and that the issues are not only black and white. He encouraged ongoing forums that include members from Hispanic, Asian, and other ethnic groups to make all people know that they are welcomed in London and will be treated with dignity and respect. We really are fortunate to have Pastors Houston and Champers and other members of our church leadership in this city who are committed to work with us to break down these barriers and achieve the goal of truly becoming an inclusive community. And I'd like to ask Pastor Houston and Champions, if we stand up to this crowd and recognize you. So moving on to the area of enhancing productivity and customer service. I'm proud to tell you that we have literally changed the workforce culture at City Hall. We have created an environment that accepts change and embraces creativity and performance management thanks to the efforts of a management team that provides vision, leadership, training, and motivation. Over the past couple of years, we have created a culture committed to solving issues for our citizens rather than just merely passing the buck. Multiple departments work together now to identify solutions to problems, dramatically increasing our percentages of success. Our employees, from police officers to stormwater workers, continue to find ways to meet the needs of our citizens, often going that extra mile to provide special service. The reason for this success is because of the culture for quality service that begins at the top. I mentioned this to you last year, we are very blessed as a city to have a very talented and committed group of department administrators who truly lead by example. Like all the department administrators, please stand up so you can I also want to share a couple of examples of employees going that extra mile that I talked about to serve our customers. If you go back 20 years ago, a big part of Renton's poor reputation surrounded our inability to process permit requests in a timely manner. And we were known to have an uncooperative and inflexible attitude when it came to inspections. This is not how you encourage new development and investment in our community. I want to share a note I received recently that reflects the types of comments that we now receive on a frequent basis. As most of you know, Renton Honda, Honda just completed building a new facility on East Valley Road. And this was a huge and expensive project. They had a very critical time, for, time frame to meet and were very pleased by the service our inspectors provided during the process. The general manager of the construction company wrote me and said, Inspectors Craig Purnell and Phil Hudgens went above and beyond for us by performing outstanding customer service during our recent construction of the Renton Honda facility. Both of them were always available when needed, listened to our concerns, and tried their hardest to take care of our needs as they came up. We look forward to working with them again in our next project. This is what's really important as an organization 
Craig and Phil, will you guys stand up so we can give you a room? Thank you guys, we really appreciate your hard work. We have us another employer that I want to mention, Bob Sowards, who works for our community service department. Bob has earned a reputation throughout City Hall as a great team player who always goes the extra mile to help others. On February 17th, Bob witnessed an incident and opted to get involved, which may have saved the life of a barista who was being attacked. While driving by, Bob noticed what appeared to be a struggle between a woman and a man, and rather than minding his own business and continuing on, he circled the block and went back to investigate and ended up interrupting a sexual assault when the man was strangling the woman. The suspect stopped the attack and drove off as Bob notified the police. The detective that's assigned to this case praised Bob for taking the initiative to get involved. She said Bob was able to provide officers with a good description of the suspect and the license number of the truck while attending to the victim until the help arrived. She is totally convinced that the victim could have been killed if it had not been for Bob's actions. Bob, you want to stand up? So You're also well aware that most of the news about police officers these days seems to be negative. Little coverage is provided for the great work thousands of officers provide each day or the extra service and care they often provide to the public and to victims of crime. We had an incident recently here in Redmond that I would like to share with you. It was the holiday season and a woman stopped by a Christmas tree lot on Rainier Avenue with her grandchildren to pick out a couple of trees. For some reason, the operator of the lot was not willing to secure the trees in the car for her, so she tried to do her best to get them tied down herself. As she pulled out of the lot onto Rainier Avenue, one of the trees began to slide off the roof of the car. And as luck would have it, a police car happened to be behind her. So you can probably write your own ending to this story. Some of you would assume that the officer cited the woman for having an unsecured loan, which would have cost her $124. Others might expect that the officer helped the woman to clear the roadway and went on to his regular patrol duty. But you'd be wrong in both scenarios. Officer Anthony Venera went that extra mile to assist the woman and her grandkids. He loaded both trees into his patrol car and delivered them to her. The woman was very pleased with the service she received and she wrote a note to our police chief stating she felt this was an outstanding show of community service. She added, we are grateful for his spirit and deemed him our community angel from God sent to us in a time of need. Anthony, will you stand up so we can recognize you? <laughs> These guys hate recognition, so it's not <laughs> easy to bring them out to these events, but we are very proud of the work that they do, and it's a sample of what our employees are doing on a daily basis, so thank you very much. Fourth priority is going to seem a bit anticlimactic given the stories I've shared with you. But believe me, establishing a sustainable fiscal strategy for this city is very important. Every year, the cost of maintaining basic city services increases, but our revenues do not grow at the same rate due to taxing policies uh, of this state. It's been a problem for a long time. Fifteen years ago, the motor vehicle excise tax was repealed, eliminating a lot of local dollars. In 2001, the state limited the growth of property tax to 1% per year that previously was capped at 6%, which helped most cities in the county to keep up with inflation. The state also reduced the share of revenue we used to receive from the liquor excise tax and profits, money that was dedicated for law enforcement. As you know, cities receive a very small portion of the property tax and sales taxes that are collected. For every dollar collected for property taxes, Renton receives only 23 cents. For sales taxes, which are very important to us, we receive less than 10 cents for every dollar collected. Yet cities are expected to provide the bulk of government services that are important to the public, from police and fire protection, parks and trails, road repairs, 
all the other services I mentioned to you earlier. We continue to work with the City Council to address these shortfalls. The challenge, of course, is to institute a business and occupation tax next year, which is something that we've been able to avoid for many years, even though all other cities our size and King County are already utilized as revenue source. The effort to overcome the structural deficit in our budget is going to continue to be a challenge for future years. So now I'd like to just move on to some accomplishments. Despite the recession, we were successful at receiving $118 million in state and federal transportation grants that allowed us to improve key roadways uh, in our city, including the redesign and construction of Rainier Avenue. And you're going to all be very happy to know that work will begin soon on the reconstruction of Logan Street over here by Renton Stadium, leading from airport way over to North 6. That's got to be one of our worst roads in town. Our city is safer than it was a few years ago, and we're better at addressing issues when they arise. Making our community a safer place to live cannot be accomplished by police law. Internally, we address ongoing issues utilizing multiple departments with the intent to find a sustainable solution to the problems. I mentioned last year about the challenges we had with several local drinking establishments. They have become a major public safety concern and a serious nuisance to nearby residents. Through the efforts of several departments, every one of those problem businesses today has since closed or changed their operations to a point where there are no longer problems impacting these neighborhoods. We have partnered with the Renton School District to fund and reinstate school resource officers at each of our high schools. This is in addition to continuing the Adopt-a-School program where officers routinely visit schools in their districts. I want to thank Superintendent Mary Rieger and the school board and her, and her staff for the collaborative partnership with the district. Mary, <laughs> The fire chief's not going to let me get out of here while I mention the fire department. The fire department's heart month continues to be a huge success. This program is designed to help residents detect if they have high blood pressure or high blood sugar. This program was expanded to include young kids in the Renton School District and residents from different ethnic communities that may not have access to health care prevention. To date, we've been doing this for a number of years now, to date, firefighters have screened over 55,000 adults and children, and they have found 18% of those checked to be at risk. Now, and a number of those included young children. Our economic development strategy contend, continues to help build the strength and quality of the community. It means new jobs, and it helps sustain quality of life amenities for both residents and for those that are working in our community. We all know about the success of the landing, and this urban center continues to attract new tenants. It's truly a success story. But it's equally exciting to see all the other development actually taking place today throughout our community. Right now, we have $300 million in new projects underway, from a new high-end waterfront hotel at Southport to a new IKEA store. And there's another $300 million in projects that are in the planning process. So, for the math majors in the room, that amounts to over a half a billion dollars of private investment in our community. This includes a large, this includes a large complex uh, planned on 12 acres of land near the Federal Reserve Bank. This was just announced recently. This is going to house the new administrative offices for Group Health Cooperative. <coughs> really important to this is the fact that it's going to uh, result in more than a thousand new jobs to run. And next to the new 12-story hotel that Michael Christ has under construction at, uh, on Lake Washington Shoreline, uh, he has submitted plans to build three office towers that will feature 736,000 square feet of Class A office space. Our auto dealers continue to thrive with new investments being made each year. I mentioned earlier that Rent and Honda recently opened their new showroom and service department on East Valley Highway. Their showroom spans an acre in size and can display several hundred autos inside the facility. The owners of Rent and Honda are planning to convert the former location on Grady Way and Rainier into a Kia dealership, which should be opening soon. CarMax, the largest uh, 
uh, used car dealership in the nation that's going to be opening up down on East Valley Road where the old uh, movie theaters were. They purchased that from. The Hampton Inn and the Marriott Residence Inn are both in design process right now for new hotels on Lake Washington Boulevard across from uh, Gene Quillon Park. Our two new libraries are planned to be completed this summer and the Aerospace Training Center at the airport will be under construction this fall. Pat Carr is currently constructing a new 200,000 square foot parts distribution center. Our downtown revitalization effort is continuing to move forward. A quality mixed use five story complex will break ground this month at South 2nd and Main Street. It will feature 101 apartment units with 4,000 square feet of retail space on the main floor. In concert with this project, the city will be converting South Main Street to two-way traffic. And that's from Mill Street near the new library all the way around the South Third Street. This project is going to include a new plaza-like intersection at South Third that will transform this intersection into a very welcoming gateway to our downtown with white sidewalks for outdoor dining and attractive landscape features. The Renton Western Wear up the street here has been sold and will hopefully become the home of a couple of restaurants and possibly a group of them. And we're actively working with several potential developers interested in building downtown as well as some new businesses that are in the process of finalizing deals to open up in the, in the downtown corridor which we're not able to disclose at this point in time, but it'll be exciting once they're announced. In concert with these projects, the city is examining our street patterns to see how we can reduce commuter traffic through the area to create a more destination and pedestrian friendly community. 65% of the cars now traveling through downtown are merely bypassing the freeway and they're not stopping to do business in the state. We will be designing a new Piazza Park out here, which will include the former Big Five site across the street. It's our goal to make this an active community park that will accommodate year-round activities, which could include music in the park or uh, possibly a water feature for kids. And soon you're going to see flower baskets return into the corridor. There's a newly formed association of business and property owners downtown working closely with the chamber to address the beautiful beautification issues, marketing, and improvement opportunities for the area. Another huge project for this community, and I know you've heard about this, is the Sunset Area Community Revitalization. This vision for a renewed Sunset neighborhood is finally becoming reality. It represents a complete overhaul of a community that has been dominated by a lot of substandard housing, many serving low-income families with few neighborhood amenities. This transformation is happening thanks to a well-organized partnership between the city, Rent and Housing Authority, and Colbert's Development, which is a private developer. It's underway now, and if you haven't had the opportunity to drive by Sunset and Harrington, it's really worth taking a trip up there because it's exciting to see the changes taking place. When completed, the Sunset community will include a new state-of-the-art library, surrounded by quality multifamily housing complexes, as well as new housing units for low-income families. It will be a walkable community with bike and walking paths leading from Sunset Boulevard north to the new Metal Crest Early Learning Childhood Center and the beautiful inclusive playground that opened this year, last year. The new housing is going to be surrounded by a 3.7 acre community park. We project a large amount of new retail development to take place in this community as well. Much of this work is already underway, and the Renton Housing Authority, with uh, in partnership with the King County Housing Authority, have applied for a $30 million federal grant that will provide more amenities to this community, as well as more than double the number of available housing units for low-income residents. I really want to single out, we have a number of employees who work really, really hard on this, this project, but I wanted to single out uh, Mark Santos Johnson, Mark stand up. He, he did an unbelievable <coughs> job. So back when uh, Mayor Clymer was trying to jumpstart the local economy, the city could not survive without Boeing. While Boeing remains our largest employer and clearly 
final partner in the health of this city. It's interesting to know that our workforce is diversified now to a point where we have thousands of new jobs that represent 65% of Renton's workforce. We expect to see continued growth with new companies and more jobs. We're very fortunate in Renton to have strong leadership from the City Council committed to setting policies that are vital to the future of this community. The City has earned a positive reputation throughout the region. Many families and young professionals are relocating here from Mercer Island, Bellevue, and other parts of the county. Renton is often mentioned in very positive terms by the public and the media. After all, we're home to the Super Bowl champions, as well as the most successful commercial airplane company in the world. And we have a beautiful river and a lake surrounded by world-class parks and trails. But most importantly, we have people who truly care about the community and for the quality of life in the city. So if you ask me, I'm convinced that the future for the city is very bright. Thank you very much.